We're talking right. about needles. So and we're we talk have, about needles. Yeah. We have needles for you, too. Yeah. So the size matters for what size thread you're using and what si what application. Because you, you wouldn't just use a jeans needle on jeans. You can use a jeans needle doing bags. You can use it for, um, I don't know if I would use it for quilting. You probably could. And the jeans needles, bags, jeans, hemming, bulky items, right? So it is a, they call it a sharp, but it is not as sharp as a sharp needle. So a lot of applications for this. Um, so we have them in size 90, 14, 100, 16, and 8012. And 8012. 8012 and above, you can use a 40 weight thread. You could probably use the jeans needle for the jelly roll rug. The rug. Yes. For a 50 weight, 50 weight thread on your domestic machine, I would use a, a 14 or a 16, probably more towards the 16. Um, so in the needle there's a groove that goes down the front of the needle and that's where your thread is protected when it goes down into the sandwich and if you're you, you know if your sandwich is really thick so like you're using quilters dream batting use a 16. if you're using a really lightweight batting you could use a 14. so always do a test sample when you start doing your quilt so take a little piece, do some free motion stitching. If your thread starts breaking, use a bigger needle. So for example, we use a 21 on our machine here, but we quilt a lot faster than you do. So we want that bigger needle so it doesn't break and cut a hole in your quilt. That would be awful. It's a huge needle, but you don't actually see the needle marks once it's quilted. So that was the jeans one, right? That was yeah. jeans. So, uh -oh. Next is leather. You can use a leather needle on leather or vinyl. So the, um, the thing that makes a leather needle different, don't use it on your cotton or your bags. Use a leather needle on those fabrics that you actually need to cut because this actually has a little blade on the needle that as it goes down, it cuts a hole in the fabric or the vinyl or the heat transfer vinyl whichever you're using. So um, I have used a leather needle on an embroidery project that we did, but it had vinyl on the top of it and I needed that knife to cut that hole. So we have them. Hey, I'll let you uh, fan. Just a minute. <laughs> just got a whole book. Yeah, a lot. Quite a few. We have cloth leather size 9014. 116, 110, 18, 80, 12. You had 116? Yeah, oh, these are ones, oh, 110, 18. Okay, these are 116, and they're all leather, all leather needles. So do you know what the difference between the 100 and the 16 is? Why there's two? One to is... confuse me. That <laughs> and there is another reason. Is there? Yeah. Sue? And it's okay if you don't. One is an American. And the other Just, one is metric. Right. Yep. So that's the difference. So. Um, and they're used interchangeably. So if somebody comes in and says, I need a size 16, they're talking about 100. Or if somebody comes in and says, I need a 110, they're talking about a size 18. I'm stuck in, you know, U.S. land. So I'm always yeah. 14, 16, mm -hmm. 18. You need a size 12. or But, so, it just depends. What size needle would be good on her brother 1500 with, 15, with the 50 weight thread? So it's really not about the machine. It's about the thread and the needle and the application. So list out your thread, list out what you're sewing, and then I can give you a recommendation on that. 
Top stitch needles are really cool. And so the, the difference in a top stitch needle is the eye is really long. So you can actually run two threads through a top stitch needle. So in top stitch needles, bigger is better. So um, you can run heavier. So I don't know if we can, if you can get really close to the very eye of the needle. And you can see that instead of being kind of round, the top stitch needle eye is elongated. And that's those. Top stitch needles are good for um, all kinds of applications and using multiple threads or a heavier thread too. And another question, do they fit the Berninas? Yes, they will work on your Bernina. The only one I'm not really sure on is Singer, and that's the older Singers with the slant needle. I think those take an a, a actual Singer needle. Okay, stretch needles for your clothing makers. So stretch needles you're gonna use on your knits, any stretchable fabrics, um, jersey, um, stretch denim, you can use a stretch needle on that too. And we have 7511, which is a very, kind of a finer needle. So if you're using, um, I can't think of a really lightweight knit, like Perkel maybe? Possibly, yeah. So, 7511. Other than like brand of machine, so like Singer, some of the older machines takes a, has a slanted shank, so it takes a special type of needle that Singer makes. Um, your machine, the needle that you use, is going to be based on what you're sewing and what thread you're using, not what machine you have, unless it's a Singer. Oh, good tip. If you're using a size 10 needle, don't use your needle thread or you will break it. Size too small. We have a 68. More 9014s. More 9014s. More 68s. And more 68s. So we have plenty of 68s and 9014s. Okay. Right. Let's do metallic. So the groove on the metallic is going to be a little bit bigger than you would see on a normal, regular, just sewing machine needle. And those are exactly what they sound like. You use them for metallic thread. They have a larger eye, um, almost like a top stitch needle. It's actually, I think, a little bit longer. But the, the major difference between the top stitch and the metallic is the top stitch is actually a little bit wider. So, and we have these in 8012 and 9014. So what makes it that you need to use a metallic needle since you're using the thread? Is it because it's tearing up the eye of the needle or? Well, the metallic thread has actually kind of this ribbon woven into the thread. That's what gives it that reflective and that ribbon can break very easily. And so that's why you want the larger eye. You could use a top stitch for um, metallic threads. What's a ballpoint needle for, John? So, um, if you're sewing and um, you don't want to split the thread or the fiber in the fabric, that's when you use a ballpoint. So, they're sometimes called jersey needles. So, if you're working on any jersey fabrics, anything where you want the needle to go in between the thread in the weave, use a ballpoint instead of a sharp because a sharp will actually pierce the thread in the weave. A ballpoint needle kind of weaves in between. I've heard people talk about doing quilting with a, a ballpoint. Um, I don't know if I would. Um, I'd have to try it. So somebody, somebody well, online- Somebody is, may have already used it. Somebody, it. somebody online is talking <laughs> about using a ballpoint needle for quilting. So like the sandwich because you're weaving through all the layers. What about t-shirt quilts? T-shirt quilt, yeah. So if you're piecing a t-shirt quilt, absolutely. Um, yeah, I would definitely try it on quilting a ballpoint needle. 
Not with this size though. This is a 70 10. We've got an 80 12. We have one 80 12. No, we've got more 80 12. Oh, the 80 that 12. That was just flying loose. And one 116. So if you're going to quilt, use the 116 piecing. You could try it oh. with a 12, but I this might not. This is a mixed package. Mixed up package? Yep. Yeah, this 80 this. 12, 80 12, <laughs> 116. Okay, so we have 16s, 12s, and 10s. Universal! We love oh, these. Gosh, I don't know what those are for. <laughs> Everything. Everything. Okay. Um, about the leather. <laughs> Universal is kind of a semi-sharp needle, so it will pierce the fibers in your fabric. Um, I use a Universal when I'm piecing. Um, I use a 12, a lot of people use a 14, so it's just a very generic, if you're not sure, grab a universal. That's and we have them, <laughs> that's what Marilyn does. <laughs> we so have, we have a 68, so a size 8, an 18, 18, 110, 18, 120, 20, a size 20, and a 70, 10. And 7010, and I'm holding the 9014s. Okay, wing needle. So if you remember some of the lace hankies or doilies that people used to make, where it had this really evenly spaced hole all the way around it and people would do tatting or crochet, that's done with your sewing machine and a wing needle. And so what this actually has is there's a blade on each side of the needle and it will actually cut a hole in the fabric. So you don't, you don't put thread in here. You, when you're sewing, you go to a like three millimeter or three and a half millimeter and then just run through your project with this. You can also, if you're a leather worker, you can punch the holes to weave your leather together. Um, if you're not sewing it on a machine. Leather together. Leather together. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really cool needle. We have three of those. It's a 16, um, which is pretty average size for that. So used a lot in linens. It's fun. This is kind of cool. I like the old fashioned stuff too, so. Okay, quilting needles. So these have several sizes. So this is what you're actually going to use when you're doing your sandwich. So these are 9014. We have 8012. And 8012s. You could use these two piece as well, the 12s, but use the 14 for quilting. If you use the 12, you're gonna get broken threads, unless you're using a really fine like a 60 weight polyester. So then I would use a 12. If you're using a 40 weight cotton, use the six, the 14. Um, be, you know, if you have a question, just just uh, message us and we'll try to get back to you on it. But if, you, if you're gonna ask us a question, tell us what you're sewing, how many layers, what, type, what size thread you're using, and throw in the brand too, because that helps us. <laughs> And we can give you a little bit of guidance on that. It may not work perfectly. Um, we may tell you a size 14, you might bump up to a 16. So 